Welcome to Fredericksburg, Virginia, the scene of, despite what the history books tell you, the scene of the largest battle ever fought in North America. It was here on December 11th through 13th that Major General Ambrose Burnside's Union Army of the Potomac took on General Robert E. Lee's Confederate Army of Northern Virginia in a disaster for the Union. But as we'll learn today as we explore the battlefield, it didn't have to be that way. You see, the roots of the Battle of Fredericksburg actually go all the way back to the Battle of Antietam. After George B. McClellan, who was known for his slowness, uh, won a strategic victory at Antietam and turned Lee's army back into Virginia, Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States, issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which would free the slaves in the states that were in rebellion then at that time. But he needed to follow that up with further victories to really give teeth to it because nobody was going to be freed until the South was conquered. The problem for Lincoln was that McClellan just would not move the army south. But it wasn't as easy as just removing him and replacing him with someone else because McClellan was incredibly popular with the army and he was also a Democrat. And Lincoln needed to uh, be very conscious of the balance of power and he knew that there were congressional elections in the fall of 1862, and it was quite possible that the Union could lose the war if the Republicans didn't hold on to Congress. And so it was only after the Republicans held on to control of Congress on November 6th, 1862, that Lincoln issued the orders to remove McClellan from command of the Army of the Potomac the following day. Ambrose Burnside was chosen to replace him. Burnside didn't want command of the Army. It was said that Burnside wept like a child when he was given command of the army. But he knew he had a job to do, and he decided to do it. Morale was down among the army who had lost their beloved commander. Morale was down with their new commander, who didn't think he was up to the task. But immediately Burnside set in motion his plans to move south and take Richmond. Immediately, Burnside began the work of planning a campaign south toward Richmond. The plan he came up with was actually a really good one, but it relied heavily on what you see behind me, pontoon bridges. You see, back in the spring and summer of 1862, the Confederacy had destroyed the bridges that crossed the Rappahannock River and into Fredericksburg, which meant the Union had to have another way to get across. And so Burnside put in motion a plan that involved speed and surprise. His plan was to march south, get across the Rappahannock River, and between Lee and Richmond before Lee even knew what was happening. And he requested from General Henry Halleck, who was the General-in-Chief of the Union Army, that a series of pontoon bridges uh, be constructed, and he needed the pontoon boats, which were north of Washington, D.C., up around Harpers Ferry, uh, what is now West Virginia, and he put that request in before he even began to move the army. While well, Burnside and the Union Army of the Potomac covered the 40 miles that they had to march to get to Fredericksburg in just two days, despite the fact that there was rain and mud that really slowed the army down. It was a brilliant maneuver, but the key was to get across the river. And the problem was that Henry Halleck did not even submit the order to request the pontoon boat to be sent until the day that the Union Second Corps began to arrive here across the river from Fredericksburg. Already, speed and surprise was being lost. It took 10 more days before the pontoon boats began to arrive. And by the time the pontoon boats had arrived, General Longstreet 
was starting to arrive on Maurice Heights on the other side of the town. The Army of Northern Virginia was now between General Burnside and Richmond, and the element of surprise was lost. Behind me is the Chatham House, which is very recognizable on the Fredericksburg battlefield. It sits on Stafford Heights, overlooking the town of Fredericksburg from across the Rappahannock River. And throughout the American Civil War, it was used uh, primarily as a headquarters for various Union generals. But during the Battle of Fredericksburg, it was mostly used as a field hospital. And uh, over the years, uh, from the time that it was first constructed in the decade or so leading up to the American Revolution, all the way to the present day, some of the most famous people uh, in history have visited here. George Washington, James Monroe, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, Abraham Lincoln, even George C. Marshall, Clara Barton, and even Walt Whitman. In fact, Clara Barton actually served here in the field hospital Walt Whitman described the scene that he saw, including the two catalpa trees on the other side of the house, which can still be seen today. And that was where they were piling the amputated limbs as they removed them from soldiers. By the time the battle was over and in the aftermath of the Battle of Fredericksburg, as the Union was here throughout the rest of the winter and into the spring, more than 130 Union soldiers were hastily buried here on the grounds but eventually they were removed and sent to other locations. <laughs> 